Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all new ASRock Desk Meet X300 Do It Yourself 8 liter mini PC. So this is a bare bones kit and I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on this. And if you're familiar with ASRock, you know they do release some really awesome do-it-yourself mini PCs, like the original Desk Mini. Now that came in two different variants. You could pick one up for Ryzen, you could pick one up for Intel, and it's the same story here for the Desk Me. But instead of relying on integrated graphics like the original Desk Mini, the Desk Me actually has enough room for a dual slot ITX card. And overall, I'm really digging the design and form factor. So these actually come bare bones. You will have to add your own storage, CPU, RAM, and GPU if you don't go with an APU in the X300 version. But if you're looking to go small form factor with it, I do think that this is going to be a great choice. It does come with a 500 watt power supply, and total volume on this unit is only 8 liters. Getting this thing apart and assembling it looks really easy. There's a single screw on the bottom, and the whole chassis will slide out of the outer case. So right now I've just got the foam in here because this is what's holding that 500 watt power supply in place during shipping. I'll go ahead and remove all of this. And in theory, you could use any ATX power supply, but they've set this up so it's got much shorter cables on it and it's just gonna make cable management inside of the desk meet a lot easier. But yeah, once we get down to it, you'll see that the board is pre-installed and it's an AM4 socket, will support up to 5000 series. I mean, we can go basically as high as we want as long as it's a 5000 series AM4 CPU or APU. It uses full-size DDR4, and it will support up to 128 gigabytes running at 3200 megahertz. Unfortunately, there's only one M.2 slot here for a drive, but it will support two 2.5 inch drives. We've got some SATA connections here and room inside of the case to mount them. So when it comes to putting this thing together, it's pretty easy. For this build here, I opted to use the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X variant. I've got a one terabyte inland NVMe SSD. I went with 16 gigabytes of Team Force Vulcan RAM running at 3200 megahertz. We're just gonna be running this in dual channel. And when it comes to the GPU, I do have a few choices. Now keep in mind, this will only fit up to a 20 centimeter card, so mini ITX is the way to go. I thought about putting a 1650 in here, or a 1650 Super. I've also got a 1660, which would offer some really great performance in this tiny build. But I'm going to keep it all AMD, and I'm also going to keep the price down by using the RX 6400. I know there's a lot of people out there that think this card is junk, but it's one of my favorite new cards that's hit the market recently. Really, when it comes down to it, my favorite use case scenario with this card would be the low profile version. But ASRock recently released the Challenger ITX, and that's exactly what we're going to be using here. We've got 4 gigabytes of GDDR6. Now this card does support PCIe X4, but the desk meet only supports PCIe X3. Shouldn't affect performance too much, and we'll definitely take a look at everything by the end of the video. But overall, I think this should be a great little 1080p performer, especially with AMD's FSR technology. And by the way, if you're interested in putting a little PC like this together, all links will be in the description. But let's go ahead and build this thing. First up, the Ryzen 5 5600. It's the non-X variant. And for the cooler, I'm going to go with the stock Wraith Stealth cooler. The DeskMe X300 supports up to a 54mm cooler, and this will fit in here just fine. Next up, let's go ahead and install the RAM. This will support up to 128 gigs, but I think 16 is going to be fine for this little build. Went with this Team Force Vulcan RAM. And I've already installed my SSD. You definitely want to get that M.2 SSD in there before you put the GPU in. But now that we have the CPU, the cooler, the RAM, and the storage installed, we can go ahead and put the GPU in. As we know, I'm using the RX 6400 in this build, but if you want to see something a little higher end, let me know in the comments below. I can do something like the GTX 1660. At least that's the highest end card I have that would fit in this unit. But once we have this secure, I mean, we're basically done with the build. CPU, cooler, RAM, storage, GPU, all that's really left to do is plug the power supply in, mount it up, and slide it back into the outer shell. The included power supply is 500 watts, and there is an extra 8-pin PCIe connector on here, just in case the GPU you chose to use needed a little extra power, like the 1650 Super or the 1660. But with the RX 6400, I'm not going to need this, so I'm going to kind of just tidy everything up once I get this mounted in. And once everything's assembled, it looks something like this. Obviously, we still need to slide it inside of the outer shell, but it's definitely a clean little build. Even without using the 8-pin connector and the extra SATA power cables, we can just zip tie those up, and it's still super clean on the inside. 
So yeah, I really do like the design of this thing. It can sit vertically or horizontally. It comes with some stick on feet, so you kind of need to decide how you want to position this. I'm going to go vertically with it, so I've got the feet on the bottom. And when it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, USB Type-C, and this is 3.2 Gen 1. We've also got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and two more USB 2.0 ports. Moving around back, we've got two more USB 3.2 ports, two more USB 2.0 ports, full-size HDMI, D-Sub, and DisplayPort. It also has gigabit Ethernet, and I kind of wish this was 2.5, but unfortunately it's just single gig. Getting my operating system installed went off without a hitch. I'm running Windows 11 Pro here, and as you can see, I mean, this thing is definitely tiny. This is a 25-inch monitor here, 1080p with FreeSync, and it does pair up really nicely with the desk meat. So we've got that 6-core, 12-thread, 5600, and the RX 6400 GPU here. So if you wanted to use this as your everyday desktop, you're not going to have any issues. Email checking, 4K video playback, you want to do some document editing, do some photo editing with this setup here. I mean, the CPU and GPU do offer more than enough power for everyday tasks. But what I wanted to see was how well it gamed with that RX 6400 in this super small form factor setup. So we're going to start off here with, uh, let's do Forza Horizon 5. Then we'll take a look at some benchmarks and then get right back into PC gaming. I also want to check out total system power consumption and CPU temps with this setup. And here it is. So we've got Forza Horizon 5 here. It's been running really well. I'm going to go into the settings real quick and I want to show you that we're at 1080p with no resolution scale on. And I've got a medium preset going here. I also tested this at high, and every once in a while I would notice it dip down to around 58 FPS. And with V-Sync on, you'd probably never notice it if you didn't have a frame counter on. So I'd say that this would be good for high 60 FPS, or maybe just a high medium mix. But with the medium preset, no resolution scale, 1080p, we can get an average of 84 FPS out of this game. But yeah, Forza Horizon 5 is definitely playable on this configuration. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks, and first up we have Geekbench 5, Single Core, 1533, Multi, 7723. Not bad at all, given that we only have 6 cores and 12 threads. Moving over to 3D Mark Night Raid, total score here, 35,882. Firestrike, 10,322. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 4,007. So I was actually pretty impressed with these benchmarks here in 3D Mark with the RX 6400. It's coming in faster than the low profile version that I tested, but I think we can keep those clocks up given that this does have a bigger heatsink than the low profile version of the RX 6400. So with the benchmarks out of the way, let's go ahead and test some more PC games. Here we have God of War 1080p original settings with FSR set to quality. I get an average of 65 FPS. Turning V-Sync on, you can run this at a constant 60, it looks really good like this, but if you did want a bit more out of it, you can always turn FSR to performance, or just take the resolution down itself, it's really up to you. But I do think that this is very playable on this little system. Next up, we've got Elden Ring, 1080p low, and I wanted to go into the settings just to show you here. This doesn't support FSR, at least from the settings, and we have nothing like that going on, no resolution scale. We're getting a constant 60, and there are some of these settings we can actually take up to medium. I just went with the preset of low, and yeah, this one is also definitely playable on the RX 6400 paired up with that 5600 CPU. Witcher 3, it's an oldie, but a goodie. With this one, I wanted to go all medium, but I did have a couple issues, and just dropping some of these settings down the low really gives us a nice FPS boost. We averaged 101 FPS, 1080p, with a medium-low mix on The Witcher 3. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, and this one is a little all over the place with this setup. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, it might be a driver issue, but we're at 1080p low, FSR set to performance, and it'll jump up into the mid 70s and down to the mid 40s. To tell you the truth, I've actually had pretty decent luck running this with FSR set to performance on the RX 6400, but for some reason, the setup that I have right now just isn't working out very well. 
Always like to throw at least one fighting game in. Here we have MK11, 1080p, high preset. It's gonna run at 60. This is a very well optimized game. I know it's been out for a while, but it's still really fun to play and it looks absolutely amazing at high settings. Okay, so here's Halo Infinite, low with a 720p resolution scale from the settings. I actually wasn't expecting to get a good frame rate like we are right now. This is well over 60, but remember this is multiplayer, campaign is a bit different, and with the same exact settings, I was only averaging around 56 FPS in campaign. And finally, we've got Microsoft Flight Simulator 720p low, and with no V-Sync on, this game, just like Cyberpunk 2077, is kind of all over the place. Personally, I would set this to medium, maybe 900p, and play it at 30fps. This little system can definitely handle it like that, but I wouldn't expect, you know, 1080p ultra settings out of this game. Another thing I like to take a look at with these small form factor PCs is total system power consumption. Some people want a lower powered system that just doesn't pull a lot of energy. And with this one here, I mean, we're kind of right there in the middle. Idle, around 27 watts. Gaming pulls 128. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 172 watts. And that's an extreme test with all six cores, 12 threads, and the RX 6400 totally maxed out. So you won't see that kind of wattage all the time. And since the CPU cooler is kind of in an odd position, almost right up against that ATX power supply, I was a little worried about CPU temps, but it did much better than I thought it would. At idle, we average around 38, average gaming, 74, and in a 10 minute Cinebench R23 stress test, we did manage to hit 93 degrees Celsius, but that's more of an extreme test, 100% on all cores and threads for 10 minutes straight. So under normal use and even AAA gaming, the CPU temps are well in range, and I actually thought it would be a bit higher than this given that I use that stock Wraith Stealth cooler. So overall, I'm really digging the new ASRock DeskMe X300. I love the fact that we can add a dedicated GPU given that it's only an ITX card, but there are higher end cards out there that'll fit. There's an RTX 3060 ITX that would fit in here perfectly, and you could go with a much higher configuration on the CPU also, like the 5800. And an RTX 3060, and you've got a potent little 1440p gaming machine here, but I wanted to keep it lower in, and I'm actually happy with the 1080p performance that this setup is putting out, and it's not going to break the bank the way it is right now. So if you're interested in putting something like this together, or you just want to learn more about the DeskMe X300, I will leave a few links in the description. And like I mentioned, if you want to see this with a higher-end GPU to see what we can really do with it, let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind adding something like an RTX 3060 here, but I would probably just end up keeping the Ryzen 5 5600 because it'll basically handle anything with that RTX 3060 attached. So if that's something you'd like to see, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be pretty cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.